Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Myself Washia Gul. I have recently graduated from COAF's King Edward Medical University, Lahore, in optometry. Being the contestant of Ocular DD Talks under the banner of Eye Healthcare, the topic which I choose to talk about is extremely serious issue of eye, that is retinitis pigmentosa. First of all, what is retinitis pigmentosa? It is hereditary disorder affecting rods more than cones, leading to dystrophy of rods and cones. Rods and cones are two types of photoreceptor cells. Rods are responsible for nighttime vision located in outer part of retina, and cones are responsible for daytime vision located in central part of retina. So basically, RP is an inherited degenerative disorder which affects the retina's ability to respond to light. It results in progressive loss of vision, eventually leading to blindness. Now we will discuss about etiology. Prevalence of RP is 1 in 4000 people. It is a hereditary defect caused by mutation of different genes. And mutation occurs in more than 60 genes. Next, we will talk about inheritance pattern. Four types of inheritance pattern, autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, X-linked and isolated. Autosomal recessive is less common and its prognosis is intermediate. Autosomal dominant is common and its prognosis is best. X-linked is rare and its prognosis is worst. Isolated without family history is common. Now we will move forward towards its pathogenesis. Initially, peripheral region of retina is affected in which rods are located and then eventually both rods and cones are destroyed. Photoreceptor dystrophy starts at equatorial region results in developing ring scotoma that extend peripherally and centrally until only tunnel vision remains which leads to blindness at the end. So early sign in RP is night blindness which eventually results in legal blindness. Retinal pigment epithelium undergoes atrophy and proliferation and migration of pigment occurs into sensory retina where it piles up along retinal vessel walls and gives the appearance of bone spicules. Next we will discuss about its signs. Visual acuity. Visual acuity is reduced. Maculopathy may be present in form of CMO, cystide macular edema, atrophic patch and cellophane which is basically premacular membrane formation. And what happens to RP epithelium? Retinal pigment epithelium becomes thin at mid periphery and relatively normal in center. And color vision is normal in this disease. Fundus examination shows attenuated blood vessels, pigmentary bone spicules, pale waxy optic disc. And now we will move forward towards its symptoms. So first symptom is night blindness. It is the early symptom. Second symptom is photophobia. That happens in some cases. Third is tunnel vision. Visual field constriction slowly resulting into small tunnel vision. Now have a look at this picture. This is how a person suffering from night blindness visualize things. The picture in front of you is showing an imagery of tunnel vision. Means patients suffering from this disease visualize things like this because peripheral, vi peripheral vision is damaged. Here as you can see is the picture of a person who is not able to see in the daylight because it's irritating for her. Types. Over 100 types of retinitis pigmentosa are present. Next, we will talk about its diagnosis. It is based on fundus findings that I have explained before. ERG, EOG, subnormal, perimetry shows classical ring scotoma, dark adaptation, time is increased. The picture right before you is showing the difference between ERG of normal eye and the eye having RP. Now differential diagnosis. To confirm whether it is RP or pseudo-RP, ERG is performed. If ERG is markedly subnormal, then it is true RP. And if ERG is normal, then it is pseudo-retinitis pigmentosa. Lastly, we will look at the treatment. Treatment is most unsatisfactory. There is no effective treatment to stop the spread of disease. First treatment is correcting refractive errors. 
prescribed glasses low vision aids are given in the form of magnifying glasses and surrounding modifications are advised use of dark sunglasses anti vegf's are given vitamin e and a supplementation can delay the onset of blindness prophylaxis genetic counseling avoid the exposure of bright sunlight California Institute for Regenerative Medicine is doing stem cell therapy in which retinal photoreceptor cells are transplanted which give benefit in two ways firstly it works as a support for sick or dying photoreceptors secondly transplanted cells develop into light sensing cells that's all thank you be happy and keep others happy allah hafiz